o Ron é, é um divulgador uh, do cinema de animação e também é um produtor, é uma figura bastante multifacetada. Um, ele, um, enfim, tem uma carreira que, que abarca mais de 30 anos uh, e, entre várias coisas, é um, fundador e produtor de um dos sites mais importantes de, de uh, cinema de animação que há, que é o awn.com, o Animation World Network. Um, ele é também um, fundador e, e dirigente de uma, de uma empresa que se chama Acme Filmworks, Uh, que é um misto de um estúdio com agência de, uh, de talentos, um, uh, que tem uma filosofia um bocadinho particular que eu lhe vou pedir também para explicar, um, e faz parte do, do ramo um, da Academia de Artes e Ciências de, de Cinematográficas de Hollywood, que, que, que promove... Uh, uh, e organiza a cerimónia dos Oscars, ele faz parte do ramo da animação, tanto das curtas metrais de animação como das longas metrais de animação. Um, faz parte do comitê de seleção e organiza um evento um, com os nomeados todos os anos, uh, em que os leva um, aos vários estúdios e, e, e vamos também tentar falar um bocadinho disso. O Ron está também aqui em Portugal para... Um, não só para apresentar estes filmes, uh, e eu já vos vou dizer o que é que os, o que é que os liga, uh, mas para apresentar uma... para fazer uma palestra na Monstra, na sexta-feira, um, que é dedicada... tem um título muito curioso, um, que não sei se exatamente nestas palavras, mas como fazer um filme de animação para ganhar um Oscar. Portanto, ele está no comitê de seleção, ele sabe, na verdade, uh, quais são os truques que eventualmente podem funcionar Uh, para a nomeação e depois eventualmente para a vitória. Uh, é evidente que não há uma fórmula definitiva, mas uh, este, esta seleção de filmes que ele, que ele aqui nos traz uh, congrega filmes nomeados, uh, filmes que por alguma razão nunca foram nomeados, mas todos têm alguma relação com a Academia de Artes e Ciências Cinematográficas de Hollywood e, e, e com a cerimónia dos Oscars. Uh, so, uh, after this uh, not so brief introduction, Yes. Um, uh, I will. Um, I want to ask you about. Uh, uh, you have a, 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 a great career and a large career, more than 30 years, I think. Yeah. And um, you, you're a founder of um, awn.com, um, which is by now. Um, one of the largest or probably the largest uh, website of um, dedicated uh, to animation um, that we know of. Um, so can you tell us a little bit uh, about that, uh, that, um, that experience, how that came about and how did it develop? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, Acme had been, I had started Acme Filmworks in 1990 and in 1995, um, my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, who was very much into computers, he said, there's an internet out there. And I said, really? And uh, he said, everybody comes to you looking for information about animation, about the independent world. Uh, why don't we create a website about that? And I said, sounds like a good idea. So we, we decided to create a website that really would be designed to inspire creative professionals and people who wanted to get into animation and give voice to the artists from around the world that otherwise would not be seen in the United States. Of course, the United States at the time, and perhaps still, is the largest user of the internet, uh, but certainly at the time it was. And so we wanted to make sure that people knew about the more obscure forms of animation, uh, the different insights and perspectives of technology and creativity that were on the fringe of animation. While giving an interest to the major studios and such, they have large machines that promote themselves, but we knew that the independents wouldn't get known without our help. Uh, to promote in the United States films from outside, from of, the outside of the United States. From outside of the United States. But also we had the idea of doing things that people wouldn't normally do in terms of major mainstream movies. So for instance, when Disney came out with their new movie, The, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, we asked um, the leading professor of Hugo at the Sorbonne uh, in Paris to analyze the movie as if uh, Hugo had uh, been, been alive to see the movie and give his perspective on it. Remarkably, those kinds of insights we found are not as interesting to the American reader, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so we, we kept trying to approach uh, even Hollywood fare from an unusual international perspective. 
So we've just been continuing. And uh, going into the future, we're looking to grow the organization and be able to provide more broad-based uh, value to the international reader and people who are interested in animation. And it's, it's very comforting that when I travel around the world to festivals, I go to many festivals every year, that I meet artists who say that, um, certainly early in, in the beginning of AWN, they said, you know, I, I felt like an island cast out far away from the rest of the animation industry. This is before social networking, before Facebook. And they said, I felt connected to the animation industry. I felt like I found my, my family, my missing family. And we would hear that from people all over the globe. And we still get that. People who read AWN and go back to all of our archives, everything we've ever published is still online. And they say that they've started businesses based on what they've learned. And they use it as a very productive tool for enhancing their careers. Um, of course, you have also Acme Filmworks, which is um, um, a little bit of a studio, a little bit of a talent agency. It's a little bit of a mix of... Uh... We started as a talent agency. Mm -hmm. but. Our first major production was with a Russian director. Uh, it was to do a paint on glass um, a commercial, 30 seconds, for Smokey Bear, the uh, forest, United States Forest Service. It was a huge production. And uh, I said, OK, here's the director. Go ahead. And they said, what are you talking about? You need to produce this. And I was like, OK. Uh, well, as it just happened to be at the time, in 1992, a uh, long time ago, uh, that there was a coup going on in Russia. And to make a phone call just to get into Moscow would take two to three hours just to get one phone call through. There were like half a dozen lines going into all of Russia. So we brought the Russian director to Los Angeles, and that was our first experience uh, producing a serious production. And since we pretty much work mm -hmm. as the producer of record on pretty much everything we produce. Okay. Was it Petrov? No. Petrov was not available. It was, Alex it was uh, Mikhail Aldashin. Ah, okay. Before uh, the Academy, um, I would like to ask you a little bit about Animation Show of Shows, which is also um, your initiative and which is also uh, unusual uh, in that it is um, a package uh, that you, a film that you do yearly and that you in the beginning, you present to the great studios, but nowadays you also release in DVDs and... Uh... That's correct. Uh, in the 1980s, if any of you remember the 1980s, it was a long time ago, again, I was involved in distributing short films. I started a distribution company when I was at UCLA Film School. I saw these great shorts. Uh, Home Box Office, the huge company that it is, was brand new. Uh, they were buying shorts for TV and uh, for cable. And I started acquiring short films. And uh, there were venues for distribution. I produced the International Tournée of Animation, which was a touring collection of animated shorts in the 80s. And then it sort of lay fallow in the, in the 90s. When I started my company, Acme Filmworks, I left the company that was doing the tournée. And they uh, pretty much ceased continuing to do the, the International Tournée of Animation. Uh, so, I realized after several years, from 1990 until 98, that most of the films I was seeing at film festivals weren't being seen in North America. There was no distribution. Uh, the, the theatrical market that I had been involved with had pretty much shut down. And I decided, you know, I know all the filmmakers. I know people at the studios. I was sort of working um, as a bit of a Switzerland. I could go to Pixar and Disney and DreamWorks and say, let me present a program of short films. And they were very receptive to that idea. And so uh, each year I go to about half a dozen film festivals and identify films that I really like, that I think are important. Now, they, I'm not necessarily looking for films that are going to win the Academy Award or get nominated for the Oscar or necessarily the award winner from that festival. I'm looking for creative films that push the boundaries either creatively on an execution level or on a narrative level that I believe professionals should be seen. And I, when I talk about professionals, I'm talking about professionals who are working in animation. Because these are pr promoting ideas and visuals that uh, really most people will never ever see outside of festivals. But I think some of them are very, very important. And as luck would have it, many of them did go on to get nominated for the Oscar. Many of them did win the Oscar. But the point is that I wanted to share with people at Pixar and at DreamWorks and Sony and ILM and all of these major name studios the films that they wouldn't see. 
the, at the time there was nothing on the internet, there was no distribution, I, nobody was releasing them. And most commonly people would ask me, where can we see these films again? And I'd have to say, well, tomorrow I'm screening over there and that's pretty much it. You will never see these films ever again. And you know, the internet got faster and many of the films are available on the internet and I did package them on DVD really as a means of just making them available to people because I think that they're important films to see. People who are studying animation, people who work in animation, people who really enjoy animation will find the collection to be really inspiring and entertaining and all of that. You're, um, you're uh, also in the, um, in the, in the animation uh, branch of uh, the Academy of uh, Motion Pictures, Arts and Sciences, mm -hmm. um, of shorts and uh, features. Um, what's your role in there uh, exactly? My role, I'm a member. Mm -hmm. And you vote? I vote for, uh, the voting is complicated when it comes to the Academy, when it comes to the Academy Awards. Um, I serve on, I generally serve on the committee for the uh, short film. I serve on the committee for the animated short film. Uh, and usually I serve on the committee for the animated feature film. Um, and I receive the same ballot that all members have uh, received every year to vote for all of the other categories. Uh, most of the categories you need to participate and you actually have to see the films, meaning somebody has to, uh, you have to sign an affidavit saying that you've seen the films or you have to go to a prescribed screening that says that you've seen the films. So I, I have many other activities that I do with the Academy. I consider it to be a very idealized organization in terms of uh, recognizing as a member of one of 6,000 people within the entire world uh, to be one of the 6,000 members amongst all of the branches uh, of which there are probably fewer than 350 um, short filmmakers uh, who are uh, in the short film and animated features branch. Um, I participate on the executive committee. I was invited to participate. It's been several years now. I uh, also um, for films that are short films that want to be qualified for consideration at the Academy, they uh, need to go through one of two processes to qualify. And I'm going to go through all of this on Thursday morning. If you have time, I'll be doing a, a, a workshop, a master class, where I'll go through more information about the Academy and about qualification of the Oscar. But I head up one of the committees that qualifies the, the um, uh, festivals for qualification, to make them qualify in festivals. Um, and then I, ha I also advise the archive, the film archive, in preserving films. And even though their objective is to preserve primarily films that have been nominated for the Academy Award, I've managed to convince them to preserve a number of films, like the films of Igor Kovalyov, uh, and um, to uh, make brand new uh, safety elements, uh, film elements, and to preserve those films for a long time. Uh, because even though they're not Oscar winners or nominees, they're important filmmakers, so they allow me to advise them as, as well. And um, you prepared uh, a package of films um, that were either nominated, awarded, or not nominated uh, for the Academy Awards. Well, uh, actually, there's a fourth category. Uh, should I just kind of yeah. explain the whole yeah. thing? Um, I, because every year I go to festivals and I see films that, for some reason, don't get submitted to the Academy, I, I'm really uh, making a big effort to try to make sure the people around the world, when I go to festivals, understand the importance and the value of submitting their films for Academy consideration. Uh, because there are many great films that don't get nominated for the Oscar. And some don't even get submitted. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, to me, it's a crime. It's a shame that a great film doesn't get submitted because there are some fabulous films that don't get submitted. So I put together a program to help uh, filmmakers, producers, uh, government representatives, uh, anybody interested, to be honest, uh, so that they can get some insight as to sort of what kind of films win the Academy Award. So the first program is films that won the Academy Award. And again, on Thursday, I'll explain a little bit about some, maybe some of the psychology of the thinking of Academy members when they sit down and they think about what's going to get the Oscar. Um, 
there's another program which is composed of films that were nominated for the Academy Award, and that's what's going to play after we're done talking here. Uh, and, and when you watch these films, you're going to go, oh, that's such a great film. Why did that film not win the Academy Award? And there are many reasons, and if we have time, we can talk about some of those reasons why they didn't get nominated, uh, why they didn't win. Um, uh, and then uh, there's a program of films that were submitted, but for various reasons, the Academy did not select them, they did not end up on the, on the final nominees list, and it perplexes one's mind. Again, to help producers understand, put it, put a frame of reference so when they look at their own films and they think, well, should I submit that for the Oscars, shouldn't I? It may, because it's not inexpensive to submit for the Academy Award, um, they may come to a realization, wow, I really should submit. Or, you know, this is a very personal film and I think that it's not really meeting the criteria of what I think the Academy is looking for. Uh, and then the last program is a, co a collection of films that never got submitted and it's heartbreaking because they're beautiful films really beautiful films and you watch the program and you say why didn't these films win the Oscar why didn't they even get submitted and it, it, it's really it's a great program let me give three reasons why some of the films that you'll see today were not Oscar winners so these ones uh, will be you're gonna see nominees, nominees today right nominees right yeah okay so first you're gonna see well, not first but during the program you'll see a film that I produced called Nibbles and I would categorize this in, into the group of, how did I even get into this group? Be it was like, well, how did I make a film that got into such a great group of other films, okay? And sometimes the Academy acknowledges a film that's a little bit quirky. And everybody kind of thinks, well, maybe you'll get the Oscar, but may maybe it won't, but it's a good film. And so the film I produced, Nibbles, is amongst that group. And this year we had a film uh, that was nominated called Dimanche, or Sunday. Um, beautiful film, but it's also one of those films that's a little bit quirky, but it's not like, um, it's, it's a little bit like playing uh, a game, you know, it's kind of a nice game, but it's not like a home run. I don't know if you get the metaphor, but you know, baseball, we like to hit the ball out of the park, and usually those are the kinds of films that win the Oscar. You know, the big movie, it's like, whoa! And, um, and Nibbles was not one of those kinds of movies. Dimanche, obviously, didn't quite hit the ball out of the park. Mm -hmm. But it's a sweet film. And it's nice that the members of the Academy in the Shorts branch who, qualify, who nominate these films actually will acknowledge a film that kind of says, hey, how did, how did I get in that group? So uh, the second category of films that I, pers this is on all my own personal theory, okay? So you can quote me if you want, but nobody else will necessarily agree. Um, the second group are the films that are amazing, great films, but when you watch it, you kind of go, ah, I was missing just a little something, just a little something. And what that little something might be is a sense of closure at the end of the film, or it might be that the character doesn't grow or motivate their own change in their own world, that, that there's some element within the story that isn't quite resolved in a way that makes you feel like, oh, okay. You know, it's, it's, it's like a fairy tale that doesn't quite end with the right kind of finish. The third category is perhaps the saddest. It's, it's about timing. Imagine two home run movies come out exactly at the same time. Now, I'll give you a, 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 an example of something that happened in the world. Uh, who remembers Princess Diana when she died? Mm -hmm. Okay, Does anybody, who remembers yeah. her? Okay, most of us remember Princess. Yeah. Who died three days before Princess Diana? Yes. yes. She totally got taken out. We, she got no coverage in the press. She had two days of coverage. Princess Diana died, and Mother Teresa was forgotten, except by you and me and a handful of other people. I mean, what a great lady. What she did for the world was amazing. Princess Diana, she did many great things, but it's just bad timing. And sometimes, in some years, you have two amazing films. And, and, and something attracts the attention of the audience. 
and it's hard to say what that is exactly, but it's about something that's going on. And it's, it's really tough because you see it and you go, what a great film. And, and you're so sure the filmmakers are going to win. And then it doesn't happen. And it's like, how's that possible? That pro today's program has one of my personal all-time favorite films. It's a nominee. It's not a winner. It makes no sense to me. But I can tell you why I think it didn't win. It's a film called When the Day Breaks. Anybody seen that film? Oh, you're so lucky because it's a fantastic film. Not a word of dialogue, so don't worry. You'll understand every single thing that happens in it. It's a beautiful film made by the National Film Board of Canada. Uh, Wendy Tilby and Amanda Forbes, absolutely gorgeous film. The year it was made, there was a short film, 30 minutes long, not so short. It was shot in IMAX. It was paint on glass. Mm -hmm. It was Hemingway. It was Alexander Petrov. It was The Old Man in the Sea. It was an epic. You have a perfect piece of poetry next to an epic. You got Mother Teresa right next to Diana. It just got totally eclipsed. And when people saw the two films together, they went, wow. They didn't go, oh my. They went, wow. And that's, to me, that might be one of the reasons. Aside from maybe many people voted for, uh, obviously, more people voted for uh, Old Man and the Sea. But in this instance, to me, the, the film um, When the Day Breaks speaks to me. And I think you'll find it to be a very powerful and moving and beautiful film. Are you, you were, no, no, yeah. I was going to mention yeah. that in, in all the years I've presenting the show shows, I've had films, I had one film from Finland, I had one film from Chile, one from Argentina. I think they're getting this part. Uh, yeah. One film from Israel. I've had two films from Portugal. I had one film by uh, Regina Pessoa, her film uh, Tragic Story, Happy Ending. Yeah. And um, uh, Miguel... Suspicion. Uh, no, no, actually, no, I did not include that. I included... I didn't choose it that year. Yeah. Uh, I chose his most recent film. Oh, yeah. uh, um, yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Journey, uh, Journey to Cape, to Verde. Cape Verde, beautiful film. Beautiful film. I'm still showing that. As a matter of yeah. fact, I'll show that in July, in um, uh, in May mm -hmm. at uh, FMX.